Hey, Dan, Dennis, uh, thanks for taking the call this morning. So um, based on what we talked about, I was going to show you a couple things here. I'm going to try and keep this kind of short just to give you an overview. But here's what you're going to get over and above QuickBooks. I mean, the ability to do really good job costing, change orders, purchase orders, RFI, submittals, transmittals, daily field reports, a uh, bunch of it's 100 and something job cost reports in the system. I promise you, you're going to find one that you like. I'll show you a couple, but I know you'll find one. But here's the other thing you can do here that uh, you're not able to do in, in QuickBooks or anything else. I'm going to go back to a job I have a lot of information on here. So I set up a job. It happens to be job number two. This is, this is the name of the job. Uh, I have six statuses I can put jobs in, so I can run reports just for open contracts, closed contracts, jobs that are in, my, in bid status so I can track them tracking a bunch of information about the client and the job. Uh, all the contacts for the job can be put in here with email addresses and phone numbers. Uh, these are user defined fields here. Uh, who estimated it, who sold it, who's supervising it. A bunch of different date fields here uh, that you can track. But what you get is, if I want to look at the budget for this job, I just click this and this is my budget by cost code. I think you would probably call them items. We call them cost codes. Uh, so this is my budget for the dumpster. This is my budget for, you know, aids to construction. But I can look at that with one mouse click. And while I'm on the same tab, same screen, these are all the purchase orders that I've written for the job. These are all of the subcontracts I've written for the job. And you know what? You want to take a look at this one. I can double click this and take it right back to the subcontract uh, of exactly what's going on here. And so... Ability to drill back. What have? Oops, I got to close this here. You know, what have I invoiced to date? What's been paid? So everything you need to do about job. I, all I had to do was, you know, I'm going to close this real quick. Is click this and put in the job number, and everything I that's going on about that project is in one place for me to kind of scroll through. And to me, that's a big deal because I don't think you have that today. And if you do, it's in a bunch of different spreadsheets. So that's, that's a job, but now I'm going to go into a job that I have an estimate for. And so we call them takeoffs. So it's, it's an estimate. Um, and I know you do two kinds of work. So this is what I call uh, my paper pushing GC, where I am pushing paper between me and the subs and trying to hold on to a piece of it. So a couple ways to do it. I can just take one line item. I want a price for my concrete subcontractor. I have it there. I like to do it this way, and this is the way I was kind of raised to do it, uh, is I'm going to take at least three prices, so I have three lines. Plus, I've been doing this a long time, and you probably have been too. I know what that should cost by looking at the plans or have a pretty good idea. So this 1950 here, that's my internal budget. And if I don't get a price that beats that, I'm going to go with that price and then try and do it myself or buy it out later. But I can go in with that price. But in this case, I got three guys that beat that price. And the one I want to use... I just happened to put a one in here. There's a quantities one. These other guys get ignored. This one I use. Prices it out. I put my overhead and profit rate on here. That's the price that's going to go to the bid uh, for that line item. These are the three guys that quoted me. Uh, and then I have a place over here to keep notes. And so pretty similar, I would bet, to, to what you're doing today. Uh, but here's the nice part. Once I get all of this taken off, you know, all of my prices in for my sub, and I'm going to turn my bid in, I get to do the following. I can take this whole thing for my budget and push it right over to the budget without having to rekey anything. If I want, I can come up with a proposal. We can design a proposal that looks like yours. I can print purchase orders or if I'm actually buying materials. And if I have subcontracts on here, I just basically say print all of the subcontracts for this job. And, and I don't know how many are on here. There might be 18, 20 of them on here. It will now create 18 individual subcontracts. And I'm going to jump over there real quick. So I go project management, subcontracts, and I'm just going to go to the last one here. Uh, this is the last one I created. It happens to be for that same job for my framing and finish. These are the line items. It's in bid status. I'll just move this to uh, the current. And if I want to print this, I have a choice of doing a letter of intent, which a lot of people will do beginning, and then I have a short form. I'll just preview that real quick. And I actually pulled up 400 of them because I 400 pages I wasn't paying attention. So 
I have clients that do it a lot of different ways. One is they'll basically create this home page, and we can fancy it up with your logo and everything. And it has the project information, the phase they're doing, the subcontractor's information, the amount of the subcontract, who the owner is, and who the architect is, and then a place for them to fill some information here that we have to have. And then they basically, you can do your choice of two things, is that we can type in your boilerplate into our program, and you can print it right out. Most clients lobby to basically print out the front page and attach that to a pre-printed boilerplate instead of designing it in the system. Uh, and that way, if it changes, you don't have to come back and rewrite the, 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 the report in here. So they basically come up with a real nice front page and then attach that to their boilerplate. But now this is in the system. Why do you want that in the system? Uh, I'm going to give you one reason really quickly here. So this report right here, if you're managing a lot of subs, it's going to pay for itself. And I'm just going to do one job. This just happens to be for job number 27 for Samson Electrical with the line items that were on his contract. So I gave him a subcontract for $2,900. And then we found some changes. We created the change order. He signed it and we signed it. So he now has a change order for $500. So I've now taken his contract value up to $3,400. I've given him con uh, I'm sorry, change order number two. He has not returned it yet, but when he does, that's going to bring his contract up to 5250. And if I go to the next page, I can see what he's invoiced me. I can see the summary of the job, and I can also see what's still sitting in accounts payable. So uh, if I get this sub on the phone or one of your project managers gets a sub on the phone, he can look at his report and he can say, yep, I see that. Hey, where's change order number two because you haven't returned it yet? And, but yeah, I say I owe you $2,200, let me call the office. Uh, basically, you have everything that you need uh, to know about that sub on that job. So I want to go in um, and look at a different job now. That was a, what I call my paper pushing job. And this is an actual remodel. And I have multiple bid items on here. So let's just, uh, first we're going to go pick the kitchen. This is the kitchen phase of the job. And we'll pick the uh, finishes and probably is more detail than you need but it gives you an idea what we can do so what we've done here is we built an assembly for cabinet installation and all I've done is I've entered in the 18 linear feet and it tells me that I need uh, $390 per linear foot for the cabinets uh, there's an upgrade for the cherry uh, I need 0.89 hours per foot to install them etc so and you probably don't care about the screws, but when we built this, the guy did. So we did it that way. You know, countertops, you know, which countertops does he want? How many linear feet? Uh, the cost. Um, scrolling down, we just have a line item for a refrigerator, a line item for an allowance for an oven. And the range and cooktop, we're going to install that. And he's providing it himself, I think, if I remember right. I um, can't remember. It's been a long time since I built this job. Anyway, and then new hardwood floor. So... We can get down to the detail on the remodels and print out all of that information as well. So uh, two levels of estimating. The high level, I'm just taking sub prices. I'm going to push those through to my budget into a proposal. And the other one is I can now start bidding items in detail uh, and get to a bid as well. So that's our estimating. Uh, I'm going to show you, um, let's see, let's look at this one real quick here. This is one of my favorite reports, and, and, and not my favorite because I use it, favorite because I know this is what our clients use. Uh, so this is one job. It happens to be that Doug Castle remodel. And the original project started out at 81000 and then he has signed four change orders as we go. So now his contract's 91000 These are the items on the job, and whether it's material, labor, or subcontract cost, my budget, budget with change orders, what I spent this month, and what I spent to date. Uh, and this is great for tracking your costs because I'm going to go look right here and say, you know, um, how did I spend $2,182? I double click that. I get my mouse in the right place. Those are the four payrolls that make up that $2,182. Those are the two guys I paid, and those are the days that they were out there. Hopefully it's right. If not, we can move it. Uh, same thing if I go to uh, another page here. Um, trying to find a big material item here, this one right here. I click this. 
and I can see that that invoice came from Home Depot. And if I want to drill back, I can actually go back to the invoice that was entered. But now I can see my cost coming through. And at the end, nice little summary, and I'm not going to go through the math here, but we come up with a projected cost based on budget and actuals. Um, so I project out future, you know, the, what the, the final cost is going to be. And then I now look, and if you remember, my contract's 91000 and I'm going to spend 91000 Probably shouldn't be doing too many of these kind of jobs. So I'm going to make a whopping 575 bucks on this job. In addition to that, by looking right here, I can see that I build for the job $29,000 and I haven't received anything. So not only am I going to do this work for $500, I'm upside down about $28,000 out of pocket already and not been paid. So uh, about as bad as it can get. But like I said, you can skip all this detail up here. What I see my owners do when they look at these reports is they just look at this bottom right hand corner and they go, okay, well, I did this job with a 20% margin, so I should be making 18,000. Uh Oh, something's wrong here. And wait a second, I haven't been paid anything on this job either. So in one little eyeball, I can look real quick and say this job is okay or this job not okay. If it was not okay, I just roll back up and drill into the detail. If it's okay, I go to the next one. But there's 100 reports similar to this where you're going to be able to get job cost information. And to me, that's what's going to drive this, um, making, making you more money, is knowing where you are on every job. So estimating, I'm not going to go into these project management, um, Subcontracts, purchase orders, full-blown change order module. I don't know if you do T&M work, but we're going to actually do a great job on T time and material billings as well. Um, estimating, I showed you real quick. Scheduling is very similar to a Microsoft uh, Office, a Microsoft Project, or SureTrack. I don't know if you've used either one of those. Uh, but, you know, here's my tasks that have to get done on the job. This is the Gantt chart, you know. And I wish they changed these buttons on me, so I have to read it in a I don't want to move it, I don't want to resize. You know, and, and, and you know what, the demolition got done a week and a half early or whatever. I can just drag that back, and all of the items that were dependent on that being done have moved back with it. Why is that important? Because somebody's doing this today, and that's notifying your subcontractors. But once I get all those schedules updated uh, for the week, I can print something or email something that looks like this and basically tells my sub electrical sub, hey, I got you scheduled for three jobs. I need you starting on this date and finishing on this date. Uh, and these are the tasks that you're supposed to be doing when you're out there. Um, the nice part is I basically get all my schedules cleaned up on a Friday morning, Friday late morning. I'm sending these out to my subs. And usually, and it's up to you, either for just the next week or for the next two weeks. It's up to you. Uh, but typically that's as far out as we would go because, uh, as you know, our business changes hourly, if not daily. Anyway. So we have those that come right out of that schedule. So that's the advantage of using our scheduling, and that comes with the package. So anyway, have a great weekend. I uh, appreciate your time this morning, and hopefully this gives you a pretty good overview of what we can do for you in, uh, in Stage 100. Thanks.